So what is pegylation and why pegylation is important? Therapeutic proteins have diverse origins and uh, applications ranging from treating diabetes to cancer. And basically we have seen all these uh, approvals by FDA of therapeutic proteins since the 80s, where you have the recombinant protein therapeutics like insulin, and then we moved to the enzyme replacement therapy. Uh, we went to the fusion proteins. Uh, we started then with the ADCs in the early, uh, in the early 2000 with site specific pegylation, also with PEG filgastrin. And we also moved then to the bispecific antibodies. And more recently, we arrived to the to the 11th, uh, in the, to the 100th unique monoclonal antibodies. So their molecular complexity and functional diversity make these drugs uh, critical in modern medicine. As you can see, the, all of these uh, proteins have grown in, in, in molecular weight. So the complexity and the structural comp uh, complexity of these drugs have been really improving over the years. So from enzymes to vaccines, therapeutic proteins serve functions like uh, replacing deficient proteins, augmenting pathways, or delivering cytotoxic payloads. As you can see here from the enzyme and regulatory proteins uh, in the function to replace all these uh, functions and all, all these questions related to novel functions uh, can be really useful in uh, clinical applications such as diabetes or Fabry disease. We also have these target uh, proteins where we can deliver these conjugates that interfere with the molecular organism or deliver these cytotoxic payloads, for example, in clinical indications such as autoimmune disorders or cancer. But we also have the vaccines that can protect against foreign agents uh, that are really key uh, factors for uh, vaccines uh, against hepatitis B, for example, and also cancer. But we can also see the protein diagnosis to detect diseases uh, in indications such as tuberculosis tests or pancreatic dysfunction tests. So their adaptability underpins their widespread use. So potential applications of therapeutic proteins are really improving over the years. This, despite these benefits, these proteins really face some challenges like immunogenicity, short half-life, or instability issues. But all of these are really due to the fact that we are uh, really dealing with proteins. So the poor in vitro stability, the low bioavailability, short half-life, um, the in vitro stability that really can uh, goes on go on aggregation during storage and during production that really can um, Im have an impact in immunogenicity. So uh, these questions limit their efficacy and require innovative solutions like pegylation. In this case, what is important here is to look at the fact that we have this uh, uh, pegylation as something that is really important, is a key strategy to increase and address the challenges that I have said before. So pegylation modifies proteins by attaching these uh, peg molecules, enhancing properties such as pharmacokinetics and reducing immunogenicity. Uh, and here what you can see is that in many ways, pegylation modifies the characteristics of the protein. And this pegylation can be uh, really conjugated in different strategies to different parts of, uh, of the protein, such as the N-terminus or the C-terminus, or inside the protein by uh, having disulfide bonds. So this represents really a significant leap in uh, biotechnology. So pegylation really addresses key limitations in improving stability, uh, reducing aggregation, or enhancing half-life. And really, you can see that really for enhancing, for example, the half-life, uh, since the proteins usually have a short half-life except the antibodies, so the potential to increase the pharmacokinetics is really uh, really high with, pharmaco uh, with uh, pegylation. So in this case, uh, the stability is also improved uh, uh, with pegylation by uh, having then the potential for lowering uh, immunogenicity. So these advances 
advancements really make it a, a cornerstone in, in modern, modern uh, drug design. In this case, uh, the clinical use of pegylated proteins are starting to have a widespread in, in clinics. So in cancer or in blood disorders or immune system related uh, indications, we are having uh, the opportunity to have the dispegulated proteins that really decrease immunogenicity of the native xenogenic proteins. So the recently approved drugs that are pegylated, uh, recently approved by FDA, are really those that are uh, targeting the ocular diseases, uh, rare diseases such as Fabry disease, Pegonigalsidase disease, alpha, and also the, the blood disorders like neutropenia with Pegfilgastrin. So it's really important to see that the pipeline continues to grow, showcasing the technique that this technique is really potential to improve the the, the potential of um, of a, a, an optimal drug. Uh, 